Hi guys, I'm going to help you with the assignment called Comparing Canyon Charts. So you need to click here to be able to look at the charts and here, oh, whoops, not that one. Here is what they look like. Um, this is showing you at Bryce Canyon the rock layers. It's just like a cross section of rock layers, the names of the rock layers, what period in geologic time they're from, and how many millions of years ago that was. It also shows you in Zion National Park the same thing, same kind of information, and at the Grand Canyon National Park same kind of information, okay? And our job is to compare these and see what we can learn about the ages of the different layers and the fossils in those layers. So let's look at the questions. The first question says, what types of information can you find on these charts? Well, we can see how many millions of years ago, that how, how old that rock layer is. We can see the name of the rock, the type of rock that it's made of. A lot of the times, like this one is white limestone, right? So those are all things you could type for number one, okay? Number two, look at the words in the geologic period columns like Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, etc. Okay, let's look at those. We got Tertiary, Cretaceous, Quaternary, Tertiary, Cretaceous, Jurassic, Permian, Pennsylvanian, those things, those words. It says, what do these names mean? So those names are periods of time in Earth's history, kind of like how we call certain months different things like January, February, March, etc. There are also names for different periods in Earth's history, and that's what these are. So for number two, I would type um, those names are periods in Earth's history, okay? Um, number three, which layers have fossils in these canyons? Hint, read in the chart because it says which layers have fossils. So let's go back to the chart and let's see if we can find where it says that it has fossils. I'm going to look in the far right column where it says type of rock slash name of rock layer. And I'm going to scan down the column until I see something that says fossils. Oh my gosh, look at this. Wall weep formation. This is in Bryce Canyon. Contains fossilized insects, fish, and dinosaurs. Okay, so I would type that for number three. Wall weep formation. Now I'm going to keep scanning. I don't see anywhere else at Bryce Canyon, so that's the only place. Now let's look at Zion National Park. I'm scanning. Oh my gosh, I found it right here. Um, sandstone, tan, fine-grained, fossil plants, and pelissipods. So that's another layer that would have it. So I would put that into number three as well. So I would say the layer in um, the layer in Zions National Park, the third layer down with sandstone. That's what I would type there. Um, we also have fossils. I'm scanning again down here in this mudstone dinosaur trackways. Those are fossils too. So I would type um, at the mudstone in Zions National Park has fossils, right? And the limestone in Zions National Park, it says it has marine fossils, right? You can do the same thing at Grand Canyon and look for fossils, okay? So any of the ones that say they have fossils, you can type there into number three. Number four, look at the names of the layers in Bryce Canyon National Park, the far right column called name of rock layer. How do you think scientists decided what to name these layers? So Bryce Canyon, the far right column, name of rock layer, how did scientists decide to name these layers? So Boat Mesa Conglomerate. Conglomerate is a type of rock. So they probably chose that name because that's the type of rock it's made of. Sandstone member, probably made of sandstone. White limestone member, probably made of white limestone, right? So I'm guessing that they chose some of these names based on... Um, based on what kind of rock they're made of. So I would just type that for number four. They probably chose these names based on what type of rock they're made of, or it could be where they're from. Or, you know, some of them like Canaan Peak Formation was probably found at a place that's called Canaan Peak, right? So you can just put what you think, but um, these ones especially are easy because it's just the type of rock they're made of. Okay, number five. If you had these charts on paper, you would be able to place them side by side and see if there are any layers that match up. That has been done for you here. 
So you don't actually have these in real life. So you can just click on that link right there. If you had them in real life, you'd be able to line them up like this. We've already done that for you. And you can see how we, able, we, we were able to figure out how to line them up. So right here in the circle, it's probably hard to read because it's so small. So I'm going to zoom in. This is from the geologic period Permian. And so is this one. So we lined those up because they're from about the same time in Earth's history. Now let's look up here. This one is from the Cretaceous period. And there's also one from the Cretaceous period in Bryce Canyon. So we lined those up as well. Same with the tertiary, okay? So we lined them up based on which periods of Earth, Earth's history they're from. That would be the answer to number five. You could say which layers you found in common. So some of the layers we found in common, we got to zoom in to see would be the layer from the Permian period at the Grand Canyon and the layer from the Permian period at Zions National Park, right? You can also put in there the ter tertiary and Cretaceous ones as well. So I'll let you go ahead and do that for number five. Number six, how do you think we were able to line up these charts side by side? How did we figure it out? Well, that's what I just explained to you is we looked at which geologic period the uh, rock layers were from and then we lined them up from that same period because these rock layers here from the Permian period in the Grand Canyon were probably formed at the same time as these rock layers in Zions National Park. We know since they were formed at the same time, we can line them up and kind of see, kind of compare them, okay? So that would be number six. Number seven, which of these locations is home to the oldest sequence of rocks, Zion, Bryce Canyon, or the Grand Canyon, and how do you know? So we got to look at this one again. Now, the oldest sequence of rocks, that would be the ones that are formed the longest time ago. Probably the ones formed longest ago are lower in the ground because they got formed and then buried by the newer layers of rock. So Grand Canyon National Park probably has the oldest layers of rock because that would be farther down. The top layer of rock at the Grand Canyon, at least in this chart, is the same as the bottom layer of rock in this chart. So probably the oldest layers of rock are from the Grand Canyon. That's what we would type for number seven. And then you need to explain how you know that, okay? The uh, questions eight and nine are very similar. Uh, which location is home to the youngest sequence of rocks and which location is home to the middle sequence of rocks. Again, you can figure that out by looking at this picture here. You're going to have to zoom in probably, but the oldest rock layers are generally on the bottom and the youngest layers are generally on top. Notice that Bryce Canyon National Park, since it's got the tertiary period on top, that fits right kind of in the middle slash top of Zion National Park. But there's nothing above tertiary on this Bryce Canyon chart, but there is something above tertiary on the Zion National Park chart. So probably the quaternary period here in Zion National Park, that is probably younger because the, the higher the rock layer is, the younger it is, and tertiary is below it, but tertiary is the youngest rocks they have on this Bryce Canyon chart, okay? So I would probably put that Zions National Park has the youngest sequence of rocks, okay? Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Um, good luck on the assignment.